Gina. Thanks so much for having me. I'm I'm such a fan of yours, Catherine. I have to tell you, Thank my you. my girls and I we love the movie, and so I'm so thrilled and happy to meet you and to be. Having a chance to have this conversation with you. So thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Likewise, I'm so excited to be a part of this amazing campaign. Oh, and thank you. Hear about what you guys do. So thank you Wonderful. so much for having me. Yeah. So I was going to share a video or part of a video of one of my favorite uh, performances of yours, Singing Yellow from Crazy Rich Asians. Do you remember this? So this is in 2019. Oh yeah, that was one of my favorite shows. It was for Identity Fest. Oh. It was a festival with a lot of Asian American artists that I looked up to a lot. So I was oh. very excited to play that show. It was surreal to be there. Well, I love it. Your voice is just so crystal clear and it sends shivers up my spine just listening to you. Oh, it's so hard for me to stop it because I just love it. I just love it. Oh my gosh. What it, what's it like to kind of watch yourself? Yeah, that was so long ago. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even have my bangs back then. <laughs> but yeah, I was a um, sophomore in college and it's really interesting when I, I feel like when I perform right afterwards, I will self-criticize a lot and be like, oh, I was so pitchy, I was so off. But then years later, I'll like look back and be like, I was actually pretty good back then. So isn't it funny how that works? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, but yeah. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. My girl and I just love, you know, watching the videos and, and we just admire you so much. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be a, a small part of you and your daughter's lives. <laughs> I know I talked to you a little bit about the significance of the color yellow and, you know, with Colt, Coldplay's song, obviously, and I know I read about how John Chua was talking to Coldplay and originally they had denied it. And he told them the story about his upbringing and the racist remarks and being referred to as yellow and the meaning of this song for him. And that's when, as I understand it, Coldplay said yes, that he was, he had the permission to use it. And that, that just touched me so much because, you know, similar, I felt that color yellow being used so derogatorily against Asian people and, and Chinese people like myself, very much directed. And I actually walked down the aisle to the song yellow because i just i just love it i just love it so so again you know i'm i'm super excited to have you here and you have been so much a part of the inspiration of the campaign from the very beginning so i wanted you to know that oh wow i am so emotional hearing all of this thank you so much i am asian american so i'm asian born in the united states my parents are immigrants from China. They came to the States for graduate school. And yeah, growing up, I feel like I, I didn't experience a lot of overt racism. I was lucky to grow up in a community that even though predominantly not communities of color and predominantly white, I felt that overall that I didn't experience too much racism, but I guess we'll probably go into this later in the interview. I, I feel like I internalized a lot of mm -hmm. self embarrassment about being Asian, even though I never was explicitly um, discriminated against against my race. But I, I feel like I told myself a lot of toxic things about how I was lesser than because yeah. I was Asian. So I guess I experienced different form of racism. But yeah, yeah it's, it's been a really interesting experience growing up uh, Chinese American in yes. California. Yes. Well, and you're right, it doesn't take that direct, you know, racist messages per se. But even like it's kind of in the in the dominant narrative, the, you know, the, the stories and the way of being is is not that being Chinese is the preferred. So I totally, yeah, I totally hear you about that. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. 
you know, and there's so much in this campaign that is about awareness and understanding about, you know, the experience of anti-Asian racism. I don't mm -hmm. know if you, if you knew the impact of what this movie would be around that, you know, the representation. Did you have any sense of that when you were doing this? Yeah, I think about this sometimes because I try to retrace like what I thought before the movie came out. And I honestly, when I recorded this for the movie, I had no idea the, the way people were going to receive it. And I didn't even think people really care about it outside of the movie. I was just excited to be part of it. So at the time I knew it was going to be something really significant for me personally and for um, my family and my, my friends because um, I, I just knew it was the first Hollywood film in 25 years to feature an all Asian cast. And um, I thought that was just something really cool and special, but I had no idea that it would just crazy rich Asians would mean so much to like so many Asian Americans and um, be one of the catalysts for so much other Asian centric content that's come after it. So um, it's definitely changed my life uh, professionally, but also personally. Um, I feel like I've never really been proud of who I was growing up. I, I, again, I kind of told you I grew up in a predominantly white community and um, even in all of my singing and acting extracurriculars, I was sometimes one of the only Asians trying to pursue that kind of stuff. So I always just felt like it must be that I am a side character in society and that I, mm -hmm. I always just, like wanted to be white. And um, I never realized like how toxic that was for my mental health and my self-confidence until I saw Crazy Rich Asians and I felt like what it was to be truly proud of your culture. Oh. So yeah, this movie really changed my life personally as well. And I'm really proud of being Asian American now and finding ways to now like translate that pride into, you know, speaking up for my community and um, encouraging others to feel the same way. That's a beautiful story. When I saw the movie with my daughters the first time, we, we talked about that and what it, like I've never experienced, you know, and I've seen some of those previous movies but there was something different about this in at the movie theater just being part of that it felt it felt like the world became a little bit bigger i don't i don't know if that's the right words but my, yeah, my daughters I, also talked about that yeah. and they started you know they started asking me more about some of the traditions like chinese traditions and how come i didn't know how to play mahjong <laughs> you know yeah. I was starting to feel like, oh no, you know, it's that, you know, being Chinese enough or not enough or too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it sparked a lot of conversation and it was, yeah, the catalyst of a lot of, I think the pride that they feel and, and for myself too. So I just, yeah, I love hearing, hearing what you're saying about it. I understand you didn't actually know it was for Crazy Rich Asians till closer, you know, closer to the actual time. So that's kind of neat too, that it was unexpected. Yeah, the whole way it kind of came about was very out of the blue, but um, I was a freshman at the University of Southern California and I was really immersed in my studies. And um, at that point, I, um, I had kind of decided to put music on pause for a little bit to focus on my college studies. I majored in human biology, so pretty intense workload and I was pre-med at the time too. Um, but yeah, one of my high school music mentors who I met at a summer program that I did called Acapella Academy, he, um, he reached out to me. His name is Ben Bram, and he's the manager of, manager producer of Pentatonix, if you've heard of them. They're a really famous acapella group, and I've always been really inspired by Pentatonix. And um, yeah, he reached out to me and just asked if I wanted to submit for an unnamed Mandarin TV film project. And I was, I didn't know what it was for, but I was excited to have an opportunity to kind of fuse my culture and my upbringing with my singing. Cause growing up, I had mostly just done um, English songs and American. Okay, I was gonna ask that. So yeah, this was like a really cool out of the blue opportunity. And they ended up liking my demo and, and bringing me into studio the next week. So it was all wow. really fast and they didn't tell me until maybe like 30 minutes before the session, they called me and told me what it was for. So it was all a whirlwind. And then I met John Chu at the session and he worked with me and shared his oh, um, inspiration behind the song. And it was just yes. all so crazy, yeah. 
oh my goodness you must have just been like I don't I can't even imagine <laughs> me neither honestly <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you you make reference to feeling that and I'm going to call it because it's what I experienced the internalized racism about being Chinese and I you know I've talked about that in my own experience can you say more about that or how that impacted you I think looking back, I realized that this may have been because of the lack of representation in of Asian people in mainstream media. I always had support, but I was always confused why I, I wasn't actively proud of who I was. And I would tell myself, you know, because you're Asian, like you need to work two or three times as hard to get noticed, or that's just the dues that you have to pay. And I kind of internalized um that it was normal to feel microaggressions. And it's like, oh, this is just part of being an immigrant. And like, it's like everyone should go through this. It's like the dues that you have to pay to mm -hmm. be in society in America. But looking back, like that is so toxic. And I would never want any young person of color to, to feel like that they deserve this kind of like microaggression and hate. So I feel like it wasn't until recently that I, I really like reflected a lot after going to college and and um, being proud of who I was that I, I started seeing that what I was feeling when I was younger is, is really not healthy. And it's, um, I feel like it's something that had a large part to do with the fact that I didn't see a lot of people like myself um, being portrayed positively and as like a main character yeah. in, um, yeah. in entertainment. So yeah, that's my small part of the story. It's and I know so, everyone has a different experience growing up Asian yes. American. But it's so well said. I think you articulate that experience like a, a weakness on our part in some ways, yeah. but it's a societal systemic issue mm -hmm. that it, we're marginalized and sidelined. Mm -hmm. And so it's a natural consequence of that to feel that, you know, that sort of inner not being good enough. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's nothing you know, you did wrong at all, but it's the way we're perceived in society. And I, you know, so much of this campaign is to work, work within that and the systemic and structural racism that's not even overt, that you can't even specifically name, but is there in that feeling that mm -hmm. you're expressing. And you, you basically so well gave examples of, you know, the stereotypes, like the perpetual foreigner, you know, yeah. because you are American, you know, but yet people treat us like we're not, you know, Canadians or Americans simply yeah. because of not looking white. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then the model minority, that idea that, you know, we kind of stay quiet and, and just work hard. You know, if we work hard and put our heads down, you know, we, we can succeed, but we have to work two or three times harder than, yeah. you know, than the dominant culture. And that's, yeah, it's just so much of, what I think the stigma around being a minority and racialized you know, person in our culture experiences. So I appreciate you sharing that. And also kind of the evolution for you and being able to say you're a proud Asian American now. Yeah. So, so just lastly, I'll tell you a little bit more about the campaign. So, yeah. you know, basically, as I, as I talked about, we're really committed to youth and the next generation, and it's wonderful talking with you. You are also our youth, face of this next generation of Asians. And I think that more and more, the youth are feeling like they could speak up. And there isn't that same traditional sense of staying quiet. At least that's what I'm seeing. So I think uprising and more around these campaigns and rallying together, I, I think there's more around that that's possible. Um, and our campaign, you know, absolutely against anti-Asian racism to combat it, racism of all forms. But in addition, it's pride and celebration of the Asian heritage and culture. So it's very much about celebration and at the same time, you know, doing what we can to eliminate the hate. And then lastly, our campaign is very much about mental health of, of Asians because I'm a psychologist that's near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working, working around eliminating the stigma of mental health and well-being for Asians, it's um, not necessarily traditionally uh, what Asians turn to, but so working around that stigma and also, you know, making sure that we have really good services and integrated interventions for people of Asian descent. So that's a little bit of a summary about the Asian Gold Ribbon. I love 
every single goal that you just listed. I love that this is, um, yes, an anti-Asian hate campaign, but also that it really encourages us to embrace our culture because I've been thinking a lot about this recently, but I think that pride in your own culture goes beyond just your personal self-confidence. I really do think it goes hand in hand with the activism because when I was younger, I, I didn't really feel very inclined to um, study Asian American issues or just speak up about things that were happening in our community. And I think that was partially because, like I mentioned, I kind of internalized all this, like maybe our community deserves this, you know. And um, so I think it wasn't until I started really fiercely becoming proud of who I was that I also started becoming really infuriated at the things that were happening in our community. And um more brave and willing to speak out so i think that it's just so important to have that self-pride because i think that's like the first step in any kind of activism is that you believe in it yourself yes. so i think it's great and also mental health is something that's so near and dear to my heart too um i grew up in a family that was actually really supportive of um having conversations about mental health mm. and um like giving me the options to do therapy and everything and that has oh, wow. I don't know where my life would be without my therapist so I really just I think it's so important that every single point that you brought up is just so important to me oh I love that you shared that same with me I don't know what I would do without my therapist you know, it's, <laughs> it's just what we we need to be bold and you know transparent about yeah I just I could talk to you forever you know <laughs> But, but what you say about ethnic identity, you know, I did some, I did some research and it's true. Positive ethnic identity buffers the negative impact of racism and discrimination. So, you know, another piece of the Asian Gold Ribbon is we created some educational resources for schools to share or for parents to watch with their kids that, you know, talked about the history and also the beauty and the richness of the culture. So if I you know, if I had that growing up when I was, you know, experiencing the things that I did, I think I would, I think I would have felt differently yeah. if there was, you know, people wearing ribbons and celebrating it, it would have, it would have taken that marginalized, you know, stay quiet. And I actually didn't even tell anybody the things that were happening to me when I was young. I just didn't want to bother my parents about it. And it was shameful. So, you know, I dealt with it alone and that's, that's exactly what we don't want this next generation to be feeling. I feel like I learned so much from just hearing your experience too. I, we have so much in common, but also stuff that happened differently. So thank you so much for sharing your perspectives as well. 